After almost three years of art experimentation, I present to you the Seep City Shower Curtain. Hi, I'm Joel Pomerantz. I created the Seep City map of San Francisco's water history. Stick around and I'll show you how I made it into a shower curtain. I'm super lucky to have Bill Stender as a friend. He's the owner of SF Landmark, a sign company that has a large-scale fabric printing machine in San Francisco. I found that Creighton Barrel made the best blank for printing a shower curtain. They call it a liner, but it's an excellent quality standalone shower curtain. I tested seven different brands and some of them were really crappy quality, but Creighton Barrel is great. The reason I like Crate and Barrel so much is because it comes in this nice package that I can reuse to put my finished product in. How very convenient. Probably even more important than that, the grommets are rust proof. There are magnets in the hem at the bottom that act as weights. And of course the magnets help if you have a standard enamel metal tub. When you've been using the curtain and it inevitably gets dirty or mildewy, you can just throw it in the laundry. With your other stuff. You can even use bleach spray without any harm to it. Just to be clear, this is not that stinky plasticky vinyl stuff. This is cloth made out of 100% polyester, which is key to the dye sublimation process. Bill's fabric printing machines are intended generally to print on long rolls of fabric, not on these individual pieces. I considered doing that, but these blanks allow me to do the quantities that I need, which are small, and I don't have to sew and grommet it myself. Using the curtain blanks, I do have to do a lot of ironing, as you can see. It minimizes creasing as it goes through this big blue machine on the right later on. There's Bill at the controls on the left. And here's the giant inkjet printer in a special climate-controlled room, so that this rather finicky machine and the paper and the ink are all at their very best. It might not look very vivid here as it comes out of the machine, but once you see what happens when it gets put onto the curtain with dye sublimation, I'm sure you'll be impressed. This machine is so touchy, sometimes it takes 45 minutes to calibrate, get all the inkjet printer heads to work properly and not be clogged, and have the paper rolling smoothly through. After the printing is done, the huge heavy rolls of paper, ten and a half feet long, need to be brought over to this big table where each piece can be cut out to be matched up with a shower curtain and printed in the dye sublimation heater. All this time I've been talking about dye sublimation, but I haven't really talked about what it is. It's kind of like Evaporation, except evaporation is from a liquid to a gas, sublimation is from a solid directly to a gas without melting. So for example, snow in a place that has a dry climate disappears without melting because it's sublimating. The dry ink sublimates to a gas off of the paper when it's heated in this heater that you see on the right side of the frame. So the ink, which is now in a gaseous state, penetrates the fibers of the polyester and creates a permanent result. Of course, if you expose it to extreme heat again, it'll look like it's fading the colors, actually dissipating the ink. This is the magic moment in the whole process. This is the dye sublimation itself. It takes a couple of minutes to go through this heater, and as long as it's pressed tightly together, the ink 
on the paper will only reach the fibers very closest, keeping the fine detail and creating this full rich color with amazing high resolution. And that high resolution detail is the whole point of putting it on a shower curtain. When I saw how little of the detail was available on the two foot by two foot posters I was making, I thought, people don't have enough space in their house for a giant blow up. Oh wait, maybe they do, on a shower curtain. Check it out, this is the part where we get it into the machine with no creases, if at all possible. It's a real challenge. In fact, almost half of the curtains that I create have some kind of a problem that involves creases or corners being flipped as it goes through these rollers. Some of those are correctable problems or just minor blemishes, but a few of them really ruin a curtain. But this one came out perfect. Just a little bit of smudging near the grommets and magnets where the paper doesn't press as hard against the cloth as it goes through this heater. It's a little bit of character, don't you think? But really, it's worth it for me not to have to do the hemming and grommeting. Those smudges are way out at the edges, not on the map itself. Of course, the blemished ones can be used as shower curtains, but the artwork's important to me. I want it to be just right, which means I wanted to beautifully show the data from my two decades of research on San Francisco's water history and shoreline. Hey, oh, why'd you throw your hat at me? I care a lot about both the aesthetics and the information given by the map. I'm all about education which is why I'm making this video to show you how the curtains were made. Ah, but what's this? A big crease in the shower curtain. So that's why you threw your hat. All right, how do I repair it? Well, I take a piece of the patch paper that I created with the colors written onto it so that I'll be able to recognize them because before it goes through the heater, it's not accurate color. Here's green. So I'm cutting out a little piece of green and I'm putting the green in a little strip right into the crease but didn't get ink. Here I'm using the iron to do the same sublimation that the large heater does when it rolls through, but here I'm just using the edges or the tip of the iron. I want to get the dye sublimation to happen from this little strip of patch paper and go into the curtain permanently using the heat of the iron, which is quite hot it needs to be held on the cloth just long enough so that the sublimated ink goes into the fibers, but the ink that's already in the curtain doesn't dissipate. Blemishes like this one, where the corner of the cloth folded over inside the heater, are much easier to repair because the ink didn't leave the paper, at least not very much of it left the paper, because there was no cloth to absorb it. And that brings us to step five, and the curtain is complete. Go to seepcity.org. The first link allows you to look at all the color options for the curtains. Thanks for watching.